we have finally arrived at the Higa County where today it's all about the brains. So not really the brains, but one of the products that is key to us, brain function and development. Exactly, we are talking about fish. Let's get some sweetness from uh, the Higa County. My location today is to go and fish from in Vihiga County. My host is Zenith Deal, popularly known as Mama Zina. And I'm accompanied by Professor Kitaka from Egerton University. So Mama Zina, probably you can tell us uh, what are all these pondlets doing here? <laughs> they are harpers. Harpers? Yeah, breeding harpers for that matter. Okay. Because I'm a fish breeder. Okay. Tilapia particularly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Now I can see some have a few fish, some have a lot of fish. What, 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 what is the main purpose of having all this? The nets are stocked. Okay. Or I stocked them okay. proportionately males to the females, mm -hmm. the required number. So what is the ratio of males to females? It's one to three. One. That's one male, three females. <coughs> Fish is polygamous. Emphasis, <laughs> emphasis. One male to three females. We can emphasize on the fact that it's fish. Mama Zina, so what is the Tigoi farm mainly known for? Is it for, for breeding or for selling grout fish? Uh, Tigoi fish farmers of now is specifically known for breeding. Okay. Yeah, fingerlings production, mm -hmm. tilapia monosex, mm -hmm. and African catfish. Okay. Yeah. So that is what you have specialized on. Yes. Why, why choose to go the breeding way instead of growing them out too? Actually, how I decided to go about the breeding was when the ESP program started, mm -hmm. we were brought, uh, the first farmers who were on phase one mm -hmm. were given fingerlings mm -hmm. and uh, some part of the feeds also. So we grew the fish. Mm -hmm. We harvested mm. and there were no more fingerlings to restock. Most people have not considered uh, fish farming actually as, as an enterprise or as a business. Uh, most people know fishing, which is going, casting a net, coming out with fish, taking it to the table. But now there is uh, fish farming, which starts with nothing to something. Now, can you take us probably through that process, just briefly? When it does not exist and a farmer is keen on starting on it, mm -hmm. she or he has to start with the fingerlings. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. then buy the fingerlings. Mm -hmm. Now that will depend again on whether that farmer intends mm -hmm. to do the fingerlings production mm -hmm. or they grow out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if it's grow out, mm -hmm. then it's advisable today mm -hmm. for the farmer to go for monosex. Okay. Yeah. By grow out, you mean you mean growing them till they are. At table size, they table come to, your table. to be sold yeah. to be eaten. Yeah. Professor, probably you can tell us what is the emphasis on having uh, monosex uh, in your fish pond as a fish farmer? I think, particularly when it comes to tilapia, mm -hmm. it is important to have the monosex which uh, Mama is here, she's talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you have both the male and the female, mm -hmm. what happens uh, the male and the female continue breeding, mm -hmm. and uh, there are two challenges in that. Mm -hmm. The two one of the challenges is when they continue breeding, you will have an overstocked pond. Yes. And therefore, the food which will be provided there will not be enough. Mm -hmm. And by the end, the farmer will get very small fish from the pond. Yeah. The second point is uh, there is a there is a risk of inbreeding, mm -hmm. which again does not ensure the quality of the fish you are going to get for the next uh, generation. Mm -hmm. So the female spend a lot of the food they eat mm -hmm. instead of going to somatic growth mm -hmm. where the fish will grow bigger for the farmer to be able to sell. Mm -hmm. The energy it will go into production, the, the food will be con converted into production mm -hmm. and therefore the female don't grow very fast. Mm -hmm. So that is why it is important for the farmer when they are stocking, mm -hmm. they actually target the males mm -hmm. who will just use the food to grow and therefore they can sell it for better fee and it will grow much bigger than the females. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mama Zinat, how, how did you start this pond? 
of course, the initial thing was the piece of land. Uh -huh. And uh, I had some fruit trees, but I had to decide between having the fruit trees or doing the pond. So I did what we call sacrifice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I sacrificed a few trees, mm -hmm. uh, fruit trees, mm -hmm. a few banana stems, mm -hmm. and I started this. Mm -hmm. So the piece of land, mm -hmm. and then uh, the financial part of it, of course, the labor mm -hmm. to do the construction, okay. the excavation, we call it construction mm -hmm. in the fish farming, yes. and then the liner. Okay. How buy. much How much did you pay? How much did it cost for you, for example, to, to, to have the excavation of this pond? I think the whole complete exercise together with the liner would have cost me about 250000 Is there a specific kind of soil that uh, one would need to know so as to put their pond without the liner? It depends on the soil structure. Okay. So most of the soils which have got a high clay component and mm -hmm. the loamy soils, yeah. majority of them will be able to hold the water and therefore you may not need to put a liner. There's a very simple way of testing it. You dig a hole mm -hmm. and put water. Mm -hmm. and just find out whether you've lost that water. I don't know whether that's what Mama used, <laughs> but she just decided. <laughs> that's a very easy way even without going to have the soil testing. If you find maybe by tomorrow the water is not there, mm -hmm. then that's already an indication that you may need liners. Now, when you're harvesting, what exactly do you harvest? Harvest them at the stage of fries. Fries. Yes. Probably, Professor, can tell us. Is it fries? <laughs> is it tuna jua Nairobi? Uh, <laughs> fish and chips. That is why. They, uh, what are these fries exactly? Actually, fries are. Uh, we can call them babies of the small. The babies of fish. Okay. Yeah, tilapias are mostly what we call mouth brooders. Uh -huh. So when they they hatch their eggs, mm. the mother takes care of the eggs in the mouth. Okay. Until, until they hatch and okay. then she releases them in the water. How long does it take for them as fries to now become fingerlings? I think what happens is, uh, you know the fries is when, they, there are two ways, the fries is when they are very small mm -hmm. And uh, when they grow up to, what is the size you sell them? One inch? One inch. One Around one half. inch, mm -hmm. one and a half, one mm -hmm. inch. They now actually you're selling them as fingerlings. Mm -hmm. What feed are you using for, for the fingerlings? For the reversion I buy from Juliet Fish Farm, mm. but for my fish feeds I do it myself. I buy the raw materials from the uh, local markets uh -huh. and do my own mixing. Mm. I have learned that also, I was taught by trailers. Yeah, I think what you can notice what, uh, because we are she's doing fish farming as a business. Yes. So it is very important not to put in a lot of uh, funds into the fish farming. Mm -hmm. So the fact that she's using her nets which are using less labor, yeah. it means she's not spending a lot of money on labor. Yes. The fact that she's not buying, because fish feed is very expensive in the market. In fact, that's the big, one of the biggest challenge we have for fish farmers in this country. Uh -huh. So the fact that she's actually able to make her own fish feed, uh, yeah. then it makes the production... Cost of production cost, is yeah, low. It's very, very maximum low. It's profits. much lower and maximum benefit. Mm. So that is how you look at fish farming as a as an entrepreneur, especially <laughs> somebody who is actually doing it as a business. Oh, oh, okay. Now, um, probably I can also ask, how and when do you know that uh, this is Mr. Fish and this is Mrs. Fish or Miss Fish? When do you know the, 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 the gender, the sex of the fish? The, I think at the age of three to four months, mm -hmm. When the fish is at least the size, much bigger than the size of a finger, about two, four to six inches, mm -hmm. we are able to tell the sex, mm -hmm. of course, after training, mm -hmm. because the organs, the sex organs are then visible. Uh -huh. Is there a way that you can control the sex of the fish towards one direction? It's very, very possible, and that's how we are talking of monosex. Mm -hmm. When the fish lays the eggs, the eggs hatch, at that point, the fish is not formed the sex organs. Okay. So for us to be able to produce monosex, mm. we feed them on a special diet. Mm. That is, a, it, it's, it's a feed form the, uh, formulated mm. and mixed with the, some hormone okay. yeah, to change the sex. Mm. And for this matter, to change them completely to males. Okay. The reason being that males grow Faster, faster and they are the ones we they are the ones we will enjoy eating. Yes. So, Mama Zina, how much do you sell your fingerlings for? 
Eight shillings apiece. A piece. Yes. How many would you get from one uh, brooding harbor? The estimated uh, eggs production per fish mm -hmm. is 600 <coughs> per, per cycle. <laughs> For one fish? <laughs> per cycle, yes. Per cycle? Yes. At one time? Yes. But, ah. but don't forget there is the issue of survival. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah. on the lower side, let's say 500. Is maybe that, half. Is that uh, maybe, maybe half? That, yeah. So that's yeah. 300. Yes. And uh, that's for one fish. Yes. And so, hey, hey, like you have, so like in this, <laughs> in this harbor, you have how many couples? In this harbor? Or rather, how many females? I have four, I have 30 females. 30 females. 15 males. 30 females, 15 yeah, males. That's so very... for each female of the 30, <laughs> we'll have approximately 200. Let's talk about 200. Yes. So 200 times 30, that's 6,000. 6,000. So 6,000. <clears throat> so 6,000 fries are what you're going to get in this harbor. Yeah, hopefully. And then from that is now that's on the very, very low side where the number was actually 600, but we've brought it down all the way. Mm -hmm. So, because no, seeds of gold is all about the numbers. And, and <laughs> that is what we are really looking <laughs> at. If you talk about 6,000, 6, <laughs> and she's selling each one of it eight at shillings. Eight shillings. And putting in very less, very little input in terms of uh, uh, funds. Because as we say, they're in that harper, yes. they'll be there for two weeks. Yeah. She'll just get two people to pull the harper. Uh -huh. And she's selling at 6,000. Are you able to get enough? Do you have a lot of the people you are supplying to? Are you able to, to produce enough fingerlings to, to your suppliers? Yes, yes. Or do they, uh, or they are still saying, we want more, we want? I, I think as of now, I don't want to complain. I can't complain of the market. Uh -huh. Yeah, because like in our county, I think I'm the sole producer of fingerlings monosex today. Mm -hmm. And therefore the demand is there. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's me to work on it. Uh -huh. yes. okay. Now the temperatures uh, of uh, this place, I must say, are very high right now. It's very hot. Uh, Pro Professor, you can tell us, is this, is this, uh, is the climatic conditions in this area a factor towards the, you know, the proper growth of the tilapia fish? Uh, most of the, the two species which a lot of farmers are growing mm. is uh, tilapia mm. and catfish, African. which mama, African catfish, which mama said she was doing it. Mm. Tilapia are a bit sensitive to temperatures. They mm. tend to grow best between 20 to 30 degrees centigrade. Mm. And catfish also grows at an optimum of 30 degrees centigrade. Okay. That is, we are not talking about the air temperature. Mm. We are talking about the water temperature. Ah, okay. So in most of the times you will find it is warm. Mm -hmm. So if you are in an area which is a very cold area like Kinagop, mm -hmm. Mount Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Egerton University in Joro, mm -hmm. one of the biggest challenge we have for tilapia propagation is mm -hmm. uh, temperatures. Because mm -hmm. sometimes at night it's very cold, there are yeah. sometimes during the year when it is very cold. Mm -hmm. But uh, lately now, most of there is technology to deal with that. Mm -hmm. If you want to grow tilapia in a very cold area, mm -hmm. you can use uh, greenhouses. Uh -huh. Just the way you use greenhouses for tomatoes and yeah. for the other crops, yeah. because that uh, extends the time of uh, high temperatures, mm -hmm. and therefore your fish grows throughout the day and night, mm -hmm. and it's likely to reach the table size much faster and grow much faster, uh, okay. bigger. Okay, so which fish would a farmer in the central part of Kenya or in Kinago, mm -hmm. you know, which, which one would they keep? Actually, the, the farmer in central Kinago will still keep the same fish Mama is keeping here. Mm -hmm. They will still keep tilapia mm -hmm. and they will still keep um, African, African catfish. catfish. In mm -hmm. fact, in central province it's quite abundant. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have really got into African catfish uh, propagation. Mm -hmm. And it has advantages, although a lot of people, most of the Kenyans don't seem to like it because of his facial, the, 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 physical, the physical appearance. Features, yes. uh -huh. But it's a, it's a much better fish because I don't know how many people are buying that. Because first of all, it has more flesh. Mm -hmm. It grows faster. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that yeah. when we get to value addition. Yeah, so <laughs> you can say, you can say why, why, what is the advantage? Because a lot of Kenyans don't seem to be going for catfish. Mm -hmm. But economically, it's actually a better fish to grow. Mm. It is. It is a better fish to grow. It grows very fast. Mm. Feeds on anything around. Me, I say, I would call it a scavenger. Uh -huh. It's actually a scavenger. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, once you stock a pond mm -hmm. of uh, tilapia, mm -hmm. it is advisable. For me, if you ask me, I say it's advisable mm -hmm. after three months mm -hmm. 
after the first stocking of tilapia, mm -hmm. three months after that, stock the same size of catfish at 10%. You can go 10 to 15%. Mm -hmm. No extra feeds will be required. Because mm -hmm. you look at this happen, you can see some remains of feed yeah. that has gone at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Tilapia won't feed on that, mm -hmm. but catfish would. Ah, yeah, so, so you use it sometimes to clean your harpers. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Actually, tilapia is, I mean, catfish is, uh, she says it fits on anything. Mm -hmm. Some of the farmers, what we do, we say, oh, you are waste products from the kitchen. Just throw it in. Mm -hmm. It can live in very uh, dirty water. I mm -hmm. say dirty in terms of not very clean. Uh, tilapias are a bit more sensitive not. on the water quality. Mm -hmm. They are very sensitive on water quality in terms mm -hmm. of... Uh, oxygen in mm -hmm. terms of inside, mm -hmm. but with catfish you can put them in very mucky water. So cat, catfish are the pigs? They are more handy. Are the pigs of Ex the fish? fish. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Why exactly. not call them pig fish then? <laughs> <laughs> These days you can breed your fish in greenhouses, so don't let climatic conditions discourage you. And catfish is one of the most profitable breeds to keep. More to come after the break. There is high demand for fish in the country and it doesn't matter whether from the lake or from the pond. The most important thing is to be near a water source or invest in rain harvesting. So this is your fingerlings nursery? Yes, please. First, probably we can start by you telling us, even before we go very far, where do you get your water from? I have mainly three sources of water. Mm -hmm. I have the borehole mm -hmm. and the rain harvest. Mm -hmm. And this tank here, you can see, okay. I pump water from the river. Ah. I've made a line all mm -hmm. the way okay. from the river. Mm -hmm. So when like the other two would fail... At any point, I, you still have another alternative. Exactly. Ah. But how much do you use, if for example, which one do you use more in your fish farm? The, the rainwater or the borehole or the river the water? Borehole. The borehole. The borehole, yeah. Now, fish has a very... Um, can I call it spiritual <laughs> following <laughs> around it yeah. to mostly uh, Kenyans from the lakeside region of our country. Now, is fish from Lake Victoria sweeter than the tilapia that I'd get from a pond? There has been several occasions where more some of the, the consumers mm. come and say, oh, the fish from the, the farms is not tasty. Mm. The fish from the farm doesn't smell. We've had a few of those complaints. Mm. But really there is no evidence that the fish from the fish farm and the fish from the natural systems is different. Mm -hmm. In fact, currently, to my knowledge, mm. most of the fish being sold at a, in, along the Lake Victoria, mm. it doesn't actually come from the lake. Mm. The fish is actually coming from fish farmers. Allah. Yeah. Okay. So the fish, most of the people eating, thinking they're coming from the lake, mm -hmm. they're actually fish which are coming from farms like this one of Mama. Okay. And since nobody has complained, mm -hmm. it means actually there's no difference between the two. Mm -hmm. So, um, say so you already not have your piece of land, you already have your, you've already started, the, you've already, you know, preset everything that you need to bring in your fingers. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you need to know about bringing in those fingers? Yeah, uh, that's another thing what also most of the farmers uh, make mistakes because since Mama is growing fish and our next door neighbor, then I also come and say I'll do, I'll, 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 I'll start fish farming. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important to have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Like if you remember, Mama said she has been trained before when she started, she yes. went all the way to Sagana. Yes. She mentioned several training she has gone. Yes. It is very important to know the knowledge and because fish is very sensitive. Yeah. You can actually, we can be counting what Mama is talking about, but she can lose that money in less than two minutes. Mm. Yeah, if she doesn't do things the way they are supposed to be done. Yeah. If she doesn't manage the water system properly, mm. then maybe they're like, uh, as I said, tilapia are very sensitive to, 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 to oxygen. So you can actually lose your fish very fast. If again, if you have not also gotten the knowledge of uh, your climate area, what do I need to do to, f to grow fish like tilapia? Because yeah, yeah. I'll come and put my fish in tilapia in Kinagop, mm. and then after eight months, like Mama is harvesting, those who are growers are harvesting in eight months, mm. but in eight months you still have 10 inches of fish. And mm. as a farmer, you get frustrated because yes. you have put money in there. Yeah. So this knowledge is actually available and is available even for the extension workers. Mm. 
And in addition, you also need to consider in terms of your fish feed. Mm. It's good to identify the fish feed, whether there is a fish feed supplier near where you are. Mm. And towards, you go towards what Mama has done mm. to be able to produce your own fish feeds. Mm. There is again available information with extension officers who can actually come and formulate. And what we recommend is formulation of fish feed using local materials. Mm -hmm. So that you don't have again to, ex to have another expenditure bring material very far. Yeah. And that one, what we normally do, is somebody can come and assess what you have. I'm sure that is what Mama did. And then they can actually formulate the fish feed for you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and again, the other serious uh, special thing and something important is on availability of the finger good quality fingerlings mm -hmm. you must be able to get good for quality fingerlings mm -hmm. you don't just get and maybe like you come and tell mama give me three three fish i go and breed them i get my fingerlings and i start growing mm -hmm. you can't do that for if you really want to do fish farming as a, as a business mm -hmm. Mama Zineth has one pond with harpers in her compound, but over time she has expanded her farm to additional ponds near the river where she breeds tilapia and catfish. Prof, you mentioned something about uh, when the fish, when the male is ready to mate. Can you take us through Actually, that Actually, Mama is very good at it. Uh, <laughs> yes, Mama, can, 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 can take us, us through it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. the, the stocking ratio we do is one male to three females. Remember that? Yeah. One to three. One uh -huh. to three. That's only for fish. And for uh, fish, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I had mentioned yeah. that. <laughs> yes. And uh, I think in that last uh, harper net, mm -hmm. we realized some fish was dancing. Yes. So we took a close look mm -hmm. and uh, I think Prof noted, I was able to identify the male. Mm -hmm. So it is known uh, from learning mm -hmm. that the male when it's about to mate mm -hmm. changes color mm -hmm. to very bright pink mm -hmm. and dances mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. the females mm -hmm. so the many of them will come around uh -huh. he will chase uh, the rest uh -huh. and pick only one uh -huh. and that is the one now he one for that, yes, for that time for that time, time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay <laughs> then after pairing with them when he's done with that one he can go to the, next, go one. To the next one. Okay. Yeah. Once the eggs are laid, mm -hmm. they are fertilized, mm -hmm. now the mama takes over. Uh -huh. Yes, All and right. he moves to the next one. Okay. Yes. Right and that's good for continuity in terms of production for fingerlings. Yes. Yeah. That is why it is very important. Yeah. <laughs> yes, for the business. For the business. For the business aspect, it's a, it's a yes. good concept. Mm. All right then. There we have it. Fish farming is a very lucrative business, especially and only if you know what you need to do. If you're planning to breed them for, uh, to breed the fingerlings, you need to know the ratio between your, fil your males and your females. If you're planning to have them for grow out, basically that is you keeping them, feeding them till you're able to sell them to when they get to our table, then you need to have only males. Otherwise, you'll have a lot of dancing in your fish ponds, which uh, <laughs> will not be very good for your product. Value addition in fish, just like in other product types, implies convenience, meaning the purchased product will have had something done to it to take the effort away from the end users. Wow. Yeah, look at that. This, so this, this is catfish. What? That's a huge <laughs> catfish. What? How, how much does this weigh? This one weighs about two and a half kilos. Ay, 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 ay. And apparently well, this is small. This is small. This is small. There yeah. can be longer. There long. can be longer, there can be bigger. You so can get five kilos. If you much? took it if you took it to the to the shop, so mm -hmm. to sell, how much would you sell yes. that? This I should ask for a thousand shillings. A thousand bob for this? Yes. And that is on the cheaper side. This are now this is tilapia. Yes. Mm -hmm. Here I was just trying to show. Mm -hmm. That uh, this is fillet yes. on skin. Yes. This is fillet uh -huh. on skin. Okay. Yeah, we have not removed the skin yeah. mm -hmm. from tilapia. Okay. This tilapia is about seven months old. Mm -hmm. And this catfish stocked in the same pond mm -hmm. is three months younger. Hey. That's what we were talking about. Hey. <laughs> catfish being a better fish ready for farming when it comes to money. And the reason, the only reason why it grows fast. people don't like the catfish is because of how it looks. Yep. If only they would stop looking at it and just eat and it. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, that's why most of the time what you recommend to the farmers is they do filleting. Mm -hmm. Exactly. For those who, because when you buy that you buy that fillet and sometimes you don't even know it's from catfish. Yeah. You just or you do fish. you had something else but uh, you use it for something else to make it mm -hmm. then you you are adding value mm -hmm. to that and then people don't have to worry about the but they say so, the head makes one of the best suits. Oh, I've yes. never tried it, but that's what so, they say. Actually, beside my fish farming <laughs> and the fingerlings production, I decided to venture into value addition. addition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so into value addition, mm -hmm. here I'm just trying to explain mm -hmm. that these are the vegetables mm -hmm. or ingredients mm -hmm. together with this mm -hmm. that one would, you would, would go into fish mm -hmm. to give up. A different product altogether. Mm. Okay. So, as the professor said, mm. for those who might look at the catfish with whiskers mm. and are scared to eat, mm -hmm. if I served them mm -hmm. with the a catfish piece, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they would eat mm -hmm. because actually catfish has got very few bones. few bones, bones. Okay. and once it's cut into a small, sorry, mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. a small piece and fried, mm -hmm. they may not mm -hmm. notice as such. Okay. Eh? The increasing demand for value-added products from consumers, aided by demographic and economic changes, means there is opportunity for everyone, even if you don't breed fish. Well, when you uh, prepare these, where do you sell them and for, say, how much do you sell them for? This is something that I uh, just ventured into it from um, July last year. Okay. And, uh, a few people have come to learn about it. Mm -hmm. So I supply the local hotels, Mbale, okay. Majengo, mm. and uh, thank God I've been able also to serve. Last time the Kakamega show, agricultural show, wow. was offered a stand wow. here by the Minister of Agriculture to showcase mm -hmm. my products. Mm -hmm. I served a function the care of held by sponsored by the Kenya Women Finance Trust mm -hmm. in Kakamega mm -hmm. also last month. Mm -hmm. And therefore my future plan is if to open an eatery place at home here itself. Mm -hmm. At my gates I have some rooms so I plan to open an eatery place where a fish farmer can come, see my fish from the fingerling stage mm -hmm. to the grow out mm -hmm. and the, the traditional fried fish. Mm -hmm and even the other products so that people get to know mm -hmm. that besides just eating fish ordinarily mm -hmm. that way, mm -hmm. they can also eat it in another way. It's actually very nice. What, what, what do you add? Because this, each of them seems to have a specific <laughs> yes, flavor. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. they have each <laughs> are distinct. That's actually what I wanted to say. It's very distinct. Yeah. Each. That is the secret of these ingredients. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> so for every product, mm -hmm. I put different ingredients. Yeah so that it gives a different flavor. This is clearly a mix of creativity and remarkable cooking skills. Mama Zina's incredible value addition is the key component in her fish farming. More to come after the break. The change in lifestyle is a major boost for demand for fish and fish-related products in the market today. And packaging goes a long way. So, why did you decide to go into value addition for your fish products? Besides just being a fish farmer, maybe for the money value part of it, yeah. I have a passion for what I do. Mm -hmm. That is fish farming all inclusive. Mm -hmm. So you are so a good cook even before you became a fish farmer? Oh yes, yes. So I love cooking mm -hmm. and fish is healthy. I want or rather I'm campaigning mm -hmm. for people to eat fish. Mm -hmm. I'm on a fish eating campaign. Mm -hmm. But I want really everyone to be able to eat fish mm -hmm. because it's healthy. Mm -hmm. And by my log it's, you know, Fish for a healthy, wealthy living. Mm -hmm. When you are healthy, you'll create wealth. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. And for that matter, the fish eating, uh, the products are, mm -hmm. even for those people who fear bonds, mm -hmm. 
lot of us still fear eating fish because of the bones. Mm. And maybe the small children also may not be able to eat fish when you prepare with the gravy. Mm. But I'm sure they'll jump for the snacks. Yes. So you said like a big tail, a big catfish, you would sell a thousand shillings? Yes. How many samosas would you get, for example, from the big catfish? That I have worked it in terms of the weight. Okay. Mm. In terms of the weight, mm. I found the price I sold that fish only, mm. assuming it was like... It is 1,000. Yes, mm. 1,000. Mm. It is possible mm. to get 10 times this, this from the finished product. So that fish yes. is 1,000? Yes. All these products, 10,000? Can give me 10,000. That is serious value addition. Mm. And I think the other crucial thing is that if, if she harvests that fish today, she has to sell it today. Yes. But with these samosas, I'm sure if they don't, you don't sell all the samosas, mm -hmm. the next you can one put them week. in the fridge mm -hmm. and you can be able to use them in the next one week. So yes. it also has a life a lifespan. Life, lifespan for mm. shelf life. Yeah, shelf life actually. Yeah. It increases the shelf life. Yeah, exactly. Because the most important thing, the biggest challenge with fish, once you fish, you must get rid of it. Yeah. You have to sell it. Yeah. But what she's actually doing is increasing the shelf life of that fish. Mm -hmm. Did you learn from anyone how to? prepare all this using fish and not the other normal you know meats that we normally have mm -hmm. i love what i do mm -hmm. and for me discovery mm -hmm. is very important so this was all experimentation exactly exactly and every time i tried one product mm -hmm. and people sampled and said wow it gives me the motivation to mm. carry on. And you had a number one um, guinea pig, that I'm is uh, which Ahmed. Was your first one? Mm. Your this son. Your first one. <laughs> this one. Samosas. Mm. This was my first product. Mm. Thank, so you, thank you, thank you. What we're telling uh, everyone out there is that they don't need to restrict themselves to what they think is the norm when it comes to business. If Had you just decided to only breed the fish and then that's it or uh, wait for them till they grow out and then that's it this 10 times value addition you'd not have enjoyed it no, I wouldn't. that is how now the idea of this training hall mm -hmm. that i would wish to train mm -hmm. willing farmers mm -hmm. not just on farming mm -hmm. that is rearing fish mm -hmm. but venturing into something mm -hmm. else beyond that mm -hmm. yes and also it's and important to do the farming the fish yourself because you know the quality of fish you are going to use for your product. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's all about value addition, maximization of profits, reduction of cost. Make more money from your farm. There are great opportunities in the fish farming value chain. It's a venture that holds infinite possibilities. Hello, it's that time again for Mifugo Nimali, a segment brought to you by KCB Foundation. The program is aimed at helping you, the farmer, increase productivity and profits with your livestock. Today's episode, we are going to focus on animal diseases, specifically foot and mouth disease. Let's go meet the farmer. Ah, that's actually very good because yes. the reason why I've come to your farm today yes. is so as to learn about uh, the proper hygiene measures okay. for uh for at least for um, Zero grazing. Zero grazing. Yes. Kwa kubaliwa kuingia kwa hii mlango, kwanza kitu ya kwanza lazima ufanya ni kukanyanga hii maji. Ili kama kuna magonjwa ambayo hiko kwa ambayo umebebana kutoka shamba ingine, au katika hile safari yako, ipate kubake kwa hii maji. Na tufanya hivyo basi. So hindi nafungulia, na wakikishe migu yote umetumbukiza ndani. Yote. My name is William Kipton Chemalan. I'm a farmer. Eleni nilikuwa nafanya kazi kwa serikali na nilipoona inaelekea kustaafu nikaona ni vyema niwe na kazi ambayo nitakuwa nikifanya baada ya kustaafu 
ni kaangalia za kazi zingine nikaona ile nitaita ni ambaye roho yangu inapendelea ni kazi ya kuchunga ngombe kile ni eh, jambo nilifanya ni kwamba nilienda kwa ofisi ya livestock au ya mifuko nikawasiliana na maofisa kwa hiyo ofisi nikaambia nataka kuanzisha zero grazing unit kwanza wakaniambia unahitaji kuwa na nyasi ya kutosha eh, road grass pandemia grass na mimea zingine ambayo itasaidiana kama chakula ya ngombe after ku harvest nyasi ya kwanza wakaniambia ni jenge stores ile nitaweka hizo nyasi nikajenga stores ya kutosha so nikaanza kujenga hii zero grazing unit nikaijenga ikawa tayari basi wakaniambia sasa unaweza tunaweza kutafuta ngombe tukatembea na wao wakiniangalia mali naweza kununua ngombe nikazinunua ngombe mbili ambaye nilianza na hii kazi ya zero grazing unit Uh, niliam, nilianza mwaka wa 2006 kununua hizo ngombe mbili to, tangu wakati huo mpaka sasa nimepata ngombe zaidi ya 20 kutok, kutokana na hizo ngombe ngombe mbili nza niliposikia majirani ugonjwa wa futa mouth ime, imeingia nikakimbia kwa wizara wakakuja wakanifanyia vaccination lakini baada ya siku kumi uh, nikaona ngombe zimeanza kushikwa na huo ugonjwa lakini niliona kama ni e, ndugu yangu ambaye tunaishi pamoja ngombe zake huwa saa zingine zinatoka naona kama pengine walitoka wakakuja na hiyo ugonjwa na wakakunywa maji pamoja na yangu hiyo ugonjwa kaingia na hiyo litupatia stress sana sababu e, ngombe walikuwa ugonjwa for almost one and a half months sikiwa chini hawakuli wana vidondo kwa miguu vidondo kwa midomo hakuna maziwa So it was a big challenge sababu uh, sikuwa na maziwa ya kuuza kufa lakini nashukuru Mungu sababu hakuna hata moja ile kufa so nimeweka things in place na najaribu kuwasiliana na wizara ya veterinary so that tukisikia kama ugonjwa huu imeanza kutokea wanakuja kunichangia au ku vaccinate is a serious notifiable disease which is caused by virus and it is transmitted uh, from infected animals to healthy animals it's also transmitted by human beings from infected farms and this disease is characterized by lesions in the mouth and foot and excessive salivation and in milking herd the milk production reduces drastically normally prevention is better than cure We advise farmers to vac- to carry out routine vaccination which will be done every six months to prevent the disease. But most of the farmers wait until the disease has occurred and then they start running up and down. So when the animal has been infected, even if you do vaccination the disease has already occurred. So what is only supposed to be done is treatment of those lesions using hydrogen peroxide and trying to assist the animal by giving glucose and uh, uh, feed which can be digested easily so that they can have that uh, energy and uh, it will heal slowly by soul we are currently advising farmers to come uh, to change from free ranging system to intensive system so that the animals are confined so they will not meet with other animals in the field Uh, which will prevent the, 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 the spread of the disease. We also advise the farmers to have food parts in their entrance with disinfectant so that if you have uh, visitors coming in, they dip their, their food in the, in the disinfectant, which will prevent the spread of the disease. So remember, vaccination and other preventive measures are key towards ensuring the health of your livestock. Let's keep the conversation going hashtag seeds of gold TV follow us on Twitter at seeds of gold TV like our Facebook page seeds of gold TV Let's keep it healthy <laughs>